This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is the e One Talk Podcast, episode 107. Recorded Friday, September 28th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Call it fate, call it destiny. The fact of the matter is, quite often, two completely random events come together when they're least expected. I was visiting a large global Avaya customer in Chicago on Friday, who, like many of our customers, are going through a flatten, consolidate, and extend, or FCE exercise, in their global telecommunications network. One of the popular network infrastructure models today is for companies to move to the cloud for many of their services. And often some large companies will view their own data centers as the cloud providing their regional and remote branches with telecommunications and web-based applications. Not only does this provide an economical environment to consolidate PSTN trunking for both inbound and outbound calls, the key point here is that the cloud doesn't necessarily have to be a public cloud. Much of the value of cloud computing can be realized by large corporations by refocusing the delivery of some of their applications from centralized, resilient data centers in the core of their own network. This is what I call the private cloud. The same rules of engagement apply, the same realizations of savings and gains in efficiency are achieved, but it's all contained within the safety and security of a corporate enterprise network. Now for every good, there's always a potential bad. And in the past, centralized trunking was extremely problematic for E911 services because of the localized geographic nature of the E911 network in the U.S. today. If I'm in one state as a user and my PBX or its trunks are located in another state, E911 will not work. Now, there's really no debate on that matter. And unless localized E911 trunking near the user is provided, The emergency call will be routed to the wrong E911 network if the normal PSTN is used. Fortunately, there's a workaround. And it's the very same workaround that was put into place to provide emergency services to residential voice over IP services, such as Vonage and the multitude of other carriers. And that is what's called a voice positioning carrier or VPC. Quite simply, the VPC is a carrier with a national presence that can provide call repositioning services and connectivity to almost any public safety answer point or PSAP in North America or Canada. The problem here is the E911 VPC services may or may not be included in your service agreement. This brings me to the first incident that happened on Friday. The large global company who was collapsing their infrastructure specifically asked if E911 was included in their service agreement. And they were unequivocally told yes by the carrier and by one of their equipment providers. They did their due diligence, they listened to my podcast, and they were sure that they asked the right questions. Almost. Although E911 service may have been included contractually, there were probably specific clauses in the master service agreement that outlined specific terms regarding enhanced 911 call treatment, which brings me directly to the second incident, which from a customer perspective was completely unrelated, but very relevant. Martha Beyer, telecom consultant and attorney, who has been a guest on this podcast several times and recently published a white paper on E911 that was sponsored by CCMI, The Voice Report, and 911 ETC, often reviews telecommunications contracts for her clients. She just happened to send me an email on Friday highlighting some specific verbiage around E911 call handling that she found in a recent master agreement between one of her clients and a large carrier. The highlights are as follows. The customer will have one billing telephone number, or BTN, per service location and circuit. When the customer dials 911, the customer agrees that the carrier will pass the respective BTN to the public safety answering point, or PSAP. If the customer requires specific ANI for each calling party number, or CPN, even if for compliance with state or local E911 requirements, the customer agrees to update the PS Alley database via a third-party enhanced 911 provider for each DID or group of DIDs. The carrier strongly advises 
that the customer does not allow any number to become active unless the PS Alley and the PSAP database updates for each number have been completed. It is the customer's responsibility to understand the state laws that pertain to them in regards to E911 requirements and compliance obligations. The carrier specifically disclaims any such obligation. Well, I think that you can agree that even though E911 is, quote, included with the service, unquote, that the customer requirements are certainly not being met from a mobility perspective and remote workers are not even being addressed in any manner whatsoever. The lesson here is, is if you're an enterprise telecommunications manager or you're responsible for E911 services in your organization, don't take anything at face value. Make sure you not only require E911 in your carrier agreements, when they tell you that it's included, make sure you both agree what exactly it actually is. Like these two examples, you may just find that there's quite a difference in opinion. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Fletch911 this week as I'm working on a story about legacy E911 and how a particular carrier is going to support it in the future or decommission it. That's coming up right here on the E911 Talk podcast. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN.